Welcome to the Ferrari Pista Spider, the last of the turbocharged 488s, successor to the 458 Aperta and the 16M, predecessor to the F8 Spider. And if you believe the gossip, the last hot V8 Ferrari ever made. It is also the 50th open top Ferrari. Regular viewers of the channel will know that this car is mine, a bespoke tailor-made creation that was specced in Italy and delivered in 2020. This week on Drive Every Ferrari, we're going to take a detailed look at this car's history, its specifications, its design, and of course, we're gonna drive the wheels off it. And I'm gonna let you know what I think of it after eight and a half a thousand miles. Welcome to the car, guys. And if that sounds like your special kind of Grigio Ferro vodka, let's get on with it. The Pista Spider was launched at the Pebble Beach Concourse de Elegance in California in 2018, with first cars delivered in 2019. If you remember, Ferrari chose a white and blue colour combination, but since most Ferrari owners wouldn't be seen dead specking a white Ferrari, this is actually one of the rarest configurations. And that's extremely unusual because normally the launch spec is the most common variant. I still pinch myself that I own this car. I picked it up on the 20th of August 2020 from Meridian Modena on a beautiful sunny day. And up to that exact moment, I didn't know if the spec that I had chosen at the factory in Italy actually worked. If you watch the specking video, you will know that we had a big old Barney with the specking process and I had to fight pretty hard to get the Grigio Ferro gold wheels and brown Alcantara interior. Ferrari wasn't sure it would work, which is actually pretty ironic because just six months later, it used that exact color combination to launch the 812 GTS. But just look at it. Perhaps my favorite of all the post Pininfarina Ferrari designs. And it's a shape that just keeps on giving, especially with the roof down. The more you look at it, the more you appreciate. And it's not just the 23,000 pound paint job, including stripe and hand painted shields. It's the complicated shape and the way that it all blends together. The Pista Spider's wind tunnel derived shape was honed by Ferrari's main track cars, the 488 Challenge and the 488 GTE. And all that endurance racing helped to shape the road cars. Ferrari claims a 20% improvement in aerodynamic efficiency over the 488 Spider, making it faster and more capable on the road and track. The improved cooling, thanks to this elaborate front bumper, these vents here help to cool the brakes. The big visual difference with the 488 GTB and Spider is no horizontal splitter on the rear side intakes. The brakes here feature these same servos from the 488 Challenge car and give you reduced weight and improved stopping distances. The Pista was the first Ferrari to feature this F1 derived S duct, a dramatic aerodynamic device that channels the cold air sucked in by the front grille and fires it over the windscreen to suck the car down and also send the air all around the car to generate downforce. It also goes over the dolphin tail rear spoiler and helps to suck hot air from the engine compartment. It's one of those cool design touches that instantly signifies this as a Pista or Pista Spider, and obviously, and latterly, an F8 Tributo or F8 Spider. So let's have a walk around this Pista Spider. Let me show you all the little cool touches and shapes that you can see. Now, obviously, one thing I should highlight are the painted shields. Now, they use a template to create these. They're not individually hand-painted by an old Italian man, but they are super cool. Why, Damien? Well, because they evoke the racing of old when old Italian men actually did paint the shields by hand on the race cars. Now, it's an option that you can have on your Ferraris. It costs 
over £10,000, but it generates larger shields. They look bigger and they are flush with the paint. They're under the lacquer, so you don't get those horrible enamel things stuck on the car. And I have to say, I'm not sure I would spec a Ferrari without them now. The main paint colour on this car is Grigio Ferro, which is a historic grey, but I chose to have gold wheels because I've always wanted gold wheels on a Ferrari, and I think you'll agree they look incredible. Now, to give the shape a little bit more drama, I thought I'd go for a stripe, so I actually picked a black centre stripe, quite a thick one, that's in Nero Stellato, and then I also went with two gold stripes either side in order to sort of tie in with the gold wheels. And the combination of the grey, the black and the gold I think works really well and as you'll see when we go into the interior I've then matched that with brown Alcantara, chocolato in Italian speak. Now you'll also notice that I've gone with quite a lot of carbon on the exterior of the car. This car has got carbon side skirts here, it's got carbon centre caps on the wheels, it's got carbon front splitter and side end plates and we've also got carbon fins here and a carbon main rear diffuser which is a real dramatic item and I think really has to be in carbon for this car. You'll also notice that this strip at the rear here with the Cavallino Rampante is in carbon as well and of course you can't not have these in carbon as well. And now it's time of course to look at the engine. On the Spider, you don't get as impressive an engine bay, but you do get this little, little hatch here. Carbon fibre engine bay, that was standard. Now this is the most powerful V8 engine in Ferrari's 75 year history. It delivers 710 brake horsepower at 8,000 RPM. And thanks to those turbos, it generates a useful 568 foot-pounds of torque or 770 newton meters. 0 to 60 is sub three seconds, which is impressive no matter how many times you say it. 2.85 seconds to be precise. 0 to 100 miles an hour comes in eight seconds, and the Pista Spider will reach a maximum speed of 211 miles an hour. That's 340 kilometers an hour. And it feels comparable to the McLaren 675LT or 720S. And that will blow your wig off. It's a 90 degree V8 dry sumped engine that sits relatively low in the engine bay, though not as low as the F8 Tributo. You've also got the new Iconal exhaust manifolds and improved exhaust bypass valve. It's louder than the 488 Spider, as you would expect from a special series car, and all the better for it. I'll tell you what, here's a comparison of the stats between the three hot special series V8 convertibles, the 16M, 458 Speciale Aperta and Pista Spider. As you can see from the 16M, power was at 503 brake horsepower and that increased by nearly 100 brake horsepower for the Speciale Aperta to 596. But then of course the addition of turbos meant the Pista Spider leapt alarmingly to 710 brake horsepower. And you can really feel it. Peak torque grew by 51 through the 430 to 458 generations and then increased significantly with those twin turbos to 568 foot-pounds for the Pista Spider. Considering we're looking at three generations of Ferrari, the 0-60 time hasn't perhaps dropped as much as you'd think. The lowly old 16M managed to do it in 3.7 seconds, deeply impressive. That dropped to three seconds for the 458 and 2.85 for the Pista Spider. So very small degrees of improvement now for subsequent generations. Top speed has gone from 196 all the way up to 211. And you can see in terms of weight, they're all hovering at round about the same sort of level, plus or minus 50 kilograms. And interestingly, the folding hardtop of this Spider helps to add 100 kilograms to the overall weight of the Pista. Yet due to the power of this engine, the performance is unaffected. Now I love the interior of this car, it's one of my favourite things about it. I didn't want to be just Mr. Black or Mr. Grey. Mr. Brown, that's a little too close to Mr. Shit. I wanted to go for something different and I wanted something that would be tonally more harmonious with the grey and the black and the gold exterior. There's no getting away from it, the interior of this car is brown. It's called Chocolato, but it's brown. But what I really appreciate is how the tones change dramatically in different lights. 
It goes from a light coppery shade to Cadbury's milk tray to deep dark sexual chocolate. But I tell you what, in order to take you through all the features of the interior, let's put the roof up so that I don't roast and so that you can see a different tone to the interior. Now the button to raise and close the roof is down here in this carbon fiber section. You push it forward for it to close and you pull it backwards for it to open, which is entirely logical. And a big old panel comes down, locks into place, then the rear deck closes, the rear window closes, and then finally, the side windows close. And there we are. Now we're safely ensconced with the hard top up. That I think is probably one of the real beauties of this retractable hard top that Ferrari took from the Fiat group and uses on all of its convertible Ferraris now. You get the best of both worlds. You get the full open top and you get the rigid hard top. Now, as you can see, for the interior, I chose the Daytona seats. So I went for the Chocolato Alcantara with Chocolato leather inserts and also Chocolato dark stitched horses on the headrests. All the top and bottom part of the dashboard is the Chocolato Alcantara. But on the Pista platform, you got this sort of strip of black plastic, sort of perforated, running through the middle just to break it up a bit, which I think sort of works. Now in this car, we've got gloss carbon fiber everywhere, which I think works better than the matte carbon. I had matte carbon in the TDF, whilst the fact that you had gloss on the outside and matte on the inside was interesting, I didn't entirely like it. I'm a gloss carbon boy, so actually I think nothing looks better. And when you see the gloss carbon sitting right up next to the Chocolato Alcantara, that difference in texture and tone and color, oh, I just think it's, absolutely fantastic. So we've got carbon kick plates, Alcantara pretty much everywhere else, and of course, a carbon central tunnel, which has got this LaFerrari section here, uh, containing the launch button, changing from auto and manual mode and reverse. And then you've also got bringing down the retractable screen at the rear. You've got the main roof controls. You also then have the windows and the hazard warning light button. The glove box has been removed, replaced by more storage nets behind the seats. A little quirk of the pista is on the passenger side, you've got a door handle and on the driver's side, you've got a door pull. No idea why, I guess it makes it feel more racy. Now ahead of me, I have that peak Formula One inspired steering wheel and it has loads and loads of buttons on it. Just like the F8 Tributo, you've got the horrendous indicators, which on this one are slightly better than the 458, but not so you'd notice. You've got the windscreen wiper uh, intermittent and severity control. You've got the headlight dip. You have the bumpy road setting, which makes it more tolerable on bumpy roads and can also be used in race mode. Engine start stop, which of course, unlike the 458, which you put a traditional key in and turn and then start, this starts it with no key inserted and it also stops the engine. You've got the Manatino here. This one's got wet, sport, race, CT off and everything off. So we're pretty familiar with those in modern Ferraris. The horns are to be found up here on the steering wheel, which is quite annoying because when you're gripping it or making a twirling motion, you can easily toot them by mistake and look like a total ass. And of course, because this is an evolution of the 458, we still have this sort of dual zone section with these controls relating to the left screen and these controls to the right. In the center, big rev counter, you definitely need that. You've got change up lights on the steering wheel, lots of drama and all the other systems of the car can be accessed on these left or right screens using a variety of buttons. They are still horrendous to use, just as they were on my 488 GTB and my 458 Specialia and Italia. We should also mention these huge carbon fiber paddles used to change gears. Uh, they are slightly larger than normal and uh, very, very cool. Down here, this is the climate control section where you can change fan speeds and temperatures and where the actual air goes in the cabin. You can only get this in a horrible black plastic. You can't get it in carbon fiber, so you just have to live with it. And just down here, we've got the button for raising the height at the front of the car, which is very important if you live in an area with speed bumps or if you've got a particularly steep drive. Other things I like in the cabin, I really like the way that you can just see bits of vents poking out from the dashboard. It's very sci-fi, very alien spaceship. I think they've done that very well. And if it's in carbon fiber, 
all the better. My car's got a silver plaque which sits between the two seats there, which in theory is supposed to be a very famous Enzo Ferrari quote, but I'm not sure if it actually makes as much sense as it's supposed to. And another thing to highlight is that up here, we've got the start stop button, which of course from 488 onwards, you have to turn off every single time you go for a drive. Every time, every single time. So there you go, that's the interior of the Pista Spider. It is an evolution of the 458 and the standard 488 GTB. It is still one of the best supercar interiors on the market. It is superb, a beautiful mixture of Italian design and flair and engineering. They've done a cracking job with these guys. Ergonomics aside, which are horrible, it's a great place to be. And obviously with the roof off, it's even better. Now, because I've waffled enough about this car in a static position, how about we take it for a drive Let's see what this baby can do. I'm in a convoy of other Ferraris from Meridian Modena. It's a lovely sunny Sunday day and uh, we are out for a drive in the countryside. Behind me, I have an SF90. Ahead of me, I have a Pista and ahead of him, I've got an F8 Tributo and some more SF90s and also a Dino. So it's quite a distinguished group. So rather than just a standard drive as part of a Drive Every Ferrari episode, I thought this would be the perfect backdrop. Now the first thing you need to know about the 488 Pista compared to the Speciale, which came before it, is that this, to me, feels like a much heavier car. The response is the overall feeling of the car when you pitch it into corners. It's not as light on its feet as the Speciale. The engine noise obviously is radically different. This has more of that V8 turbo bellow that you get from the F40, whereas the Speciale is one of those beautiful high revving V8s, naturally aspirated. It sings, where is this one bellows? The Peace of Spider is, of course, a lot faster than the 458. It has enormous dollops of torque. That's the real benefit of a twin turbo motor. As you accelerate, it just feels like it keeps going and going and going. It just doesn't feel like it's ever gonna stop accelerating. And that's the real plus of the Pista. It's, it's crazy, crazy fast. It's a wild ride. It's kind of like the new Velociraptor ride at Universal Studios. It's just absolutely full on. I guess you've been waiting and looking for some beans. Now that time is here. You ready? Second gear. is ludicrously fast. We actually had wheel spin then on a bone dry day on new tires. People don't seem to appreciate the Pista is a very quick car. The 488 was a quick car. The Pista just turns it up just a little bit more. This is third gear. Ready? Personally, for me, and perhaps I shouldn't say this, I'm not a big fan of the new turbo V8s. To me, a lot of the time, the engine sounds like someone trying to clear their throat of phlegm. It's like someone who's had a bout of COVID or a heavy cold, and they just got that sort of claggy feeling in the back of their throat all the time. You get these sort of lumpy, gristly noises rather than sweet upshifts or downshifts. Take your foot off the throttle and you get this sort of <coughs> sort of noise. I don't think it's the greatest sounding Ferrari engine. I think it delivers the performance, it delivers the punch that you want, 
but if you're looking for oral stimulation, FNAR, FNAR, the 458 Speciale is the one that truly delivers. Oh, tight left there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh wow, this is a road, isn't it? Look at that, what a view. We are scything through what feels like a field and it's glorious, it's just glorious. Now we've got that fantastic Ferrari double clutch gearbox which means instant changes. It really is impressive the way that you can bang down and up the gears. There's no real delay, it doesn't upset the car when you are driving hard. It's a thing of wonder, it really is. You can of course drive it in race mode with the bumpy road setting on, thanks to Michael Schumacher, so you can have all the benefits of the responses and the additional noise and the additional urge from the engine whilst also not having your teeth jarred from your gums. Has Ferrari eliminated scuttle shake through incredible engineering and structural rigidity improvements? No, no, it's still a bit wobbly in here. The steering wheel is a good size, it's quite a chunky number. You've got the change up lights at the top, which of course is the coolest thing in the world, especially if you're eight years old. It's designed to obviously evoke feelings of a modern Formula One car, which is both a good and a bad thing. It's also designed so that you keep your hands on the wheel and you don't have to move them off to do anything, which again, in theory, is a very good and can be a bad thing. The downside, of course, is that you've got the horrible fuzzy indicators, which both turn off too quickly and sometimes don't turn on. So you can be indicating for a turn, and if you nudge the wheel slightly, it'll turn off, but you think you're still indicating, which can get quite dangerous. Same thing for roundabouts. If you have roundabouts in your country, you can again be on the roundabout thinking that you're indicating. You can then indicate to come off the roundabout and then find that you're not, which again is quite dangerous because cars pull out in front of you. When I first got this car, the brakes felt absolutely horrendous. In fact, they didn't even really stop the car at all. But I've since been told, oh, a bit of grit, since been told that you really have to bed them in by doing some aggressive braking from high speed over and over again to really sort of like get the brakes to an optimum level. And now they are at that. So they do feel pretty good now. Oh, wow, look at this. So we're now going through what feels like Lord of the Rings because we've got this tunnel of trees. Oh, it's just beautiful. What a day, what a day. I do have quite a big problem with the stop-start technology on this car because in the Speciale, you can hold down the button and it turns it off forever, which I have mentioned before if you're a regular viewer. But in this, you have to do it every single time you get in the car. It does mar my Pista experience because of course if you forget to do it and you come up to a junction, the engine cuts off, so you think the thing's stalled. And that is really, really annoying. It's a stupid thing brought about by those mad environmental czars in Europe who somehow believe that it makes even a gnat's whisker of difference that as soon as you come to a stop in a Ferrari, it needs to cut the engine. It's absolutely ludicrous. And it means that in order to satisfy that tiny number of total morons, it inconveniences the modern Ferrari driver every single time they get in the car. Every single time. What Ferrari should have done as Italians often do when it comes to rules and regulations, is gone. What's the 488 Pista, Pista Spider all about? Well, really, it's brute power. It's brute, noisy, gas-guzzling power. It's about the surge of the turbos. It's about hustling into corners, blasting your way out of them, but it is most certainly not a delicate experience. This is more like a sledgehammer compared to the 458 Speciale's chisel. I adore the looks of the thing. 
particularly in this spec, which is obviously fantastic. I do love the speed, it is quite addictive, and this thing, when you really get it on song, it's, it's properly flying. I like the way it rides over bumps. I probably should also mention the roof. That does give this car a sort of double personality, which I do like. These Daytona seats are comfortable and they look historic as well, which is perfect. I love the gloss carbon fiber in the cabin and I love the gloss carbon fiber outside. And of course, I love the gold wheels. But interestingly, given that this is a modern Ferrari, there are actually quite a few things that I don't like. Number one, the engine noise and the way that the engine sounds when you're around town is not particularly nice at all. It does mean that the driving experience is dominated by these deep roars and that can get a little bit tiresome. For me, the steering on this car is one of the biggest chinks in the armor. It's just not good at all. It's way too heavy. There isn't any real feel in it and I do suspect that I need some kind of gyroscopic enhancement or alignment because the way this car was delivered I don't think is right so I do definitely need to get on and do that. You'll note because it's me I've not yet done it. I probably should also mention the brakes which initially were horrendous and now feel better but one thing you can't deny is that in terms of visual shock and awe this has got it and it's got it in spades. When I look at this car, particularly in side profile, it's so aggressively beautiful, far more so than the understatement of the 458. So overall then, this is an interesting car for me. It, I don't love every single aspect of it, but because I've had such a personal journey with it, it's not one that I can see leaving the garage. It's a sort of flawed gem, really. Thank you for watching this episode on the Ferrari Pista Spider as part of my Drive Every Ferrari series. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it interesting and entertaining. If you like what we're doing on the car, guys, please subscribe, leave comments and likes. There'll be another episode next week.